Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about the uh, concept of average time average power of a signal and then we talk about power signals and the energy signals. So let's start with the first one which is the time average power of a signal. Um, let me write the formula of it first and then I explain it later on. So for the continuous time, the time average power is given by um, limit capital T goes to infinity. Um, 1 over 2t integral minus t till t x of t mod square dt and for the discrete time case that time average power is given by p infinity limit n goes to infinity 1 over 2n plus 1 summation small n from goes from minus capital N plus capital N and mod of xn whole squared. So let's try to make some sense of this formula and to do that let me take an example where I have a single x of t which looks something like this and I'm asked to find the power of it. So what the formula says is that First of all, you have to take a window of length 2n, sorry, 2t. So what I mean is, let's just say if that is x of t and the origin, um, the formula says that I have to assume a window of length 2t. So it's from minus t till t. So I have to assume a window of length 2t. And then evaluate this integral in that window. So, in this window, I have to evaluate the integral which is from minus t till t, x mod t over square dt. Once I evaluate this integral, um, I have to divide it by the window's width. In, the case, in this case, the window width is 2t. So, 2t is the window width. So that's that part and then the limit says that you have to take the window as large as possible so so you have to take this window as large as possible like um, in our case I have taken it from this point to this point but if you can manage to take it from this point to let's say this point then you must do it so that's the that's, that's kind of explanation for this formula. I hope it makes sense. Now for the discrete time case, the formula remains the same. Apart from the fact that we have added a plus one here. Now the question is, why is it so? Well, um, it's, it is quite an obvious, but let me use a small example to make it further clear to you guys. Let's just say that we have a signal like this in the discrete time. So this is my x of n for which I'm asked to find the power. And this is my origin. This is first sample, second sample, third sample. Um, minus one sample, minus two sample, and so on and so forth. Um, again, um, the same concept apply. We have to define a window, and the window is should be of the length 2n. So let's just say if I define a window from minus 3 till 3. So I define my n to be 3. So my window is going to be from minus day 3 till 3. And if I count the number of samples, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 samples. So in the window of 2n, which is equal to 6, I get a sample number of samples to be 7, which is equal to 2n plus 1. And that is why we have to put extra 1, which counts for the sample on the origin. And again, um, as for the definition, 
the window length must be as large as possible so that window length of 2n must be as large as possible um, just for the sake of explanation I have taken it to be um, 6 sample but in reality it has to be quite a large number as large as you can handle now let's try out some examples and for that I need some space so let me do the first example where I have a signal like this now this is a very special kind of signal about which we'll talk in the future but anyways let me define this signal something like this so this is a signal which gives you 0 when t is negative and it gives you 1 when t is positive for those who are interested we call this kind of uh, we call this kind of signal as unit step and we'll talk more about it in the future videos for the time being let's just try to find the power of this signal so if i use the formula t infinity is limit capital t must go to infinity 1 over 2, 2t which is the window length and then we have to integrate over the window now the question is what should be the window length let me just take the capital T here and obviously then minus T is going to be somewhere over here and as the limit says that the window length must be as large as possible so I just think of a case where the T capital T is quite large so it's far 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 away from the region and similarly the minus T is far 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 away from the region so if I solve this integral I'll have 1 over 2t and then I'll have to see I have to split this integral in two parts now because the function is going to take a value of 0 when I evaluate the integral from minus t till 0 and this function x of t is going to take a value of 1 if I evaluate it from 0 to capital T so I have to break this integral in two parts which is from minus capital T to 0 and then from 0 till capital T so the value of x of t in, in that in that region is 0 and 0 mod square is again 0 so that is going to be 0 and the value of x of t in, in the range of t from 0 to capital T is 1 and 1 mod is 1 and again 1 mod square is again 1 and so we're left with limit t goes to infinity 1 over 2t 0 to t um, dt and that turns out to be limit t goes to infinity 1 over 2t times t that t cancels out and now we are going to left with only half so that is the power of this symbol over here now there is something to observe in this example in this example the power happens to be finite which is half and if you try to find the energy of this x of t that is going to be infinity for those who don't know how to find the energy um, just go back and see one of my videos where I explain how to find the energy of any signal so um, if you find the energy of this signal x of t that will turn out to be infinity now the signals where this power is finite and the power is finite and not zero and the energy is infinity are called power signals so formally the power signals are the signals where the two conditions have to met the first one is 
the energy must be infinity and the power must be not equal to zero and not infinity or you can say less than infinity and greater than zero so if that's the case we call that signal to be a power signal let's take a, another example this time around um, I'll have a signal which is something like this x of t e is power j um, 2t plus pi by 4 and I'm asked to find its power um, or the property or uh, we should say time average power so time average, from, time average power is given by t infinity which is limit t goes to infinity which says that the window length must be as large as possible divide by the window length which is 2t um, minus t till t x t mod square dt and if I plug in the value of x of t here I left with this thing is power j 2t plus pi by 4 square dt now that term is equal to 1 because um, the magnitude of any complex exponential is 1 so that leaves us with this expression and if I solve it I will be having answer of limit t equals infinity 1 over 2t times 2t cancels out and we'll have the answer of 1 so the power of this signal is 1 or we should say time average power is 1 now let's take the last example uh, and this time around I'm going to take a discrete time sequence and for that let me just take a single x of n to be equal to 5 now such a signal if you're asked to plot is going to take a value of 5 for all values of n so when n is 0 we'll have 5 when n is 1 we'll have 5 when n is 2 we'll have 5 and so on similarly when n is minus 1 we'll still have 5 if n is minus 2 we we'll still have 5 so this is how we plot this signal x of n equal to 5 and we are asked to find the power of it so let's see how we do it. Um, the power of discrete time sequences is given by, or we should say, the time average power of discrete time sequences is given by p infinity, one over uh, limit n goes to infinity, one over two n plus one. Remember that the window length here is two n, and that plus one comes here because we have to take in the fact we have to count the the zero sample or as well, and then we have to sum. From minus n to capital N x mod n square. Now the value of this signal is 5 so we'll have limit n goes to infinity 1 over 2n plus 1 summation minus, infinity, minus n till capital N and then 5 mod is 5 and then square of it is 25 so that's what I get and if I simplify it I'll so this turns if I solve this uh, summation um, so I'll get 25 outside limit n goes to infinity 1 over 2 n plus 1 summation minus n to capital n and 1 over here and now if I say if I solve this in uh, summation and that is going to result into 2n plus 1 and if that makes sense fair enough if not um, 
let's just try to take n to be capital N to be let's just say 2 um, so if n is 2 means this is my window length and what I'm doing here is I'm counting the one that many times um, so if I see that the n values the small n has a value of minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2 so I have to count this one five times one two three four five so that is going to be equal to five if n was two and the five is equal to two n plus one so that is why I'm saying that that summation um, is going to result in 2n plus 1 and that 2n plus 1 is going to cancel this part and then there's nothing to apply the limit on so this is the power that we have got for this signal um, lastly before we leave um, I want to make a comment and the comment is there is a special case for finding the power of periodic signals. Now, I'm not going to cover this topic in this video because we need something else, or we want to. We need to decide. We need to describe what periodic signals are first before we actually talk about the power of the periodic signals. So it's just a comment um, so that you can remember that something is there which is we have left and should be covered and we are going to cover that in the future video. So yeah that's it from my side. Um, if you have any questions or any comments um, just leave them in the comment section below and thank you for listening.